So what draws a particular kind of person to start performing stand-up? Some would say it's ego, others might say it's a huge ego. The Melbourne International Comedy Festival is on again and I'm looking forward to all the crowds, reviews and the eventual debate over what you can and can't say. Now, I've started hearing about something in the local comedy scene called safe rooms. Somewhere people can watch comedy without fear of hearing racist, sexist, homophobic or misogynistic material. You know, all the fun stuff. Now, being told not to swear at a gig at a daycare centre is one thing, being told what you can and can't say at an open mic or a gig for paying adults is where ironically I get offended. I guess that's my issue with the idea of safe comedy rooms. It's somebody telling me what I can't say and I think that's up to the audience to decide. I also think that too many aspects of our lives are already monitored whether you know it or not. So not fucking stand up as well. Or at least that was my first reaction. I'll admit my hack ethnic humor only works because people aren't totally sure they're allowed to laugh at it. I went to a Christmas party and the theme was fairy tale. I wore a suit and I went as an Aboriginal prime minister. <laughs> Once racism is gone, my jokes are dead. It's not in my career's interest for things to get better. Uh, we've only just decided to put down our guitars and racial slurs to swap them out for theater sports and complaining about how silly our dads are. And if you're worried about censorship or exclusion, here's a list of words you can't say anymore unless they've been used on you. And if you miss those ones, the ones in your head, they're right too. But luckily, here's what you still can say. It's hard to understand the value of a safe space when your safe space is the entire planet Earth. I found no matter how much you try to eliminate bad elements, they find their way into your path. Whether it's creating your own comedy room, society or group, someone's gonna want to encroach on it. I guess safe rooms feel redundant to me because the most racist, sexist, homophobic or misogynistic things happen in the green room where there is no crowd. I got to play the Sydney Opera House in front of 2,400 people. I guess I was the opening act, but still. After the gig, I got offered tickets to Robbie Williams and called an abo by the same guy while I was still in the opera house. I'm so hardened to this scenario that the only thing that really upset me was the fact this douchebag thought I was a Robbie Williams fan. Assholes are literally everywhere. The only thing you can really control is whether or not you're one of them. 